Today, we are going to be reading from Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to be reading verses 6 through 10. Again, this is tying into our theme of the year, Rooted, Growing, Spreading. Today, we're going to be talking about rooted, so I want you to think about how this goes in with that. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. And then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. This is God's word for God's people. Be seated. We have junior church. For those that would like to go and do some other activities, you're welcome to go do that. Garrett says, come on, guys, let's go. Let's go check this out. (laughs) Well, how was your week? Sorry, it's back. (laughs) Skipped a week on you, but how was your week? Busy, great, crazy, wet. The end of it was wet, yeah. Windy, yeah, windy, tree falling windy, right? (laughs) <laughs> kids went back to school yeah for some of you yay I heard a yay I think out there um, and hopefully life was a little bit back to normal uh, holidays can be a, a place where we get out of rhythm right now now even those who don't have kids you got you got to be honest having Christmas day in the middle of the week and having New Year's Day in the middle of the week it completely throws everything off right It just makes everything crazy. Like you go to work for a day or two and then you're off and then you come back for a day maybe or two or in in those two weeks there, man, that was just, it's hit or miss. Too many Mondays, right? I, I pray that you remembered this week though, the theme, what we started with last week. I hope you found yourselves looking for ways to stay rooted in scripture and love, that you found ways to continue to keep growing and that you found a way to get involved in spreading the good news of the gospel. That was my prayer for you this week. Last week, we introduced that theme. We're gonna hold that through the year. And I know some of you were really, uh, I I had a few questions about where's the magnets. Uh, So they're coming, Uh, they'll be here next week. I actually had them, but I didn't have them sorted and, 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 and all that stuff. Uh, I kind of forgot about them actually when they came in, I set them aside and then they, they were there. Uh, So they'll be here next week. So you'll get your new magnets next week. Uh, I had somebody in Maplewood who commented, uh, I have mine on my locker at work, and people were asking me, well, don't you have one for 2020? So today I would like us to focus on the first of these three pieces of, of this theme, and that's being rooted. What does it mean to be rooted in Scripture and love? Let me first give you a little bit of background. And I found it... uh, Again, this part's going to be a little bit wordy and a little bit official, uh, but, but hopefully I can help you pull some things out of it. Um, I went to the Book of Discipline. I went to the United Methodist Book of Discipline, so that way we could see what it was that we were looking for. Uh, what is it that we are trying to, to base our belief on? What is it that we're trying to say we believe? And so in the Book of Discipline, uh, 2016 version, in case you're wondering, Page 11, in case you're jotting this down, you want to go look this up in the Book of Discipline later. I've got, you know, cited references. Um, (laughs) In the early 1500s, various reform movements emerged in Western Europe that created forms of Western Christianity not in communion with the Roman Catholic Pope. These became known as Protestantism. They emphasized a return to the sources of faith, that is... God's action in salvation, and Scripture as the authority for doctrine and practice. Very, very, very Methodist sounding right there, right? God's action in salvation, 
and scripture is the authority for doctrine and practice. Different contexts and visions produced Lutheran, Reformed, Anabaptist, Anglican Protestantism, all of which influenced the traditions that came together to form United Methodism. Now, I will go to the uh, paragraph 102, section one, our doctrinal heritage. So this is the, the part of us that's, that's, that's rooted here, right? Uh, page 47, our heritage in doctrine and our present theological task focus upon a renewed grasp of the sovereignty of God and of God's love in Christ amid the continuing crises of human existence. That sounds like that would be relevant today, right? Our forebears in the faith reaffirmed the ancient Christian message as found in the apostolic witness, the, the witness of the apostles, if you will, um, even as they applied it in a new, in their own circumstance. Their preaching and teaching were grounded in scripture, informed by Christian tradition, enlivened in experience, and tested in reason. Sounds like stuff that we've talked about before, right? Sounds pretty right on, right? This is what it is. Uh, if we continue in paragraph 102, 48 and 49, nonetheless, the basic measure of authenticity and doctrinal standards, whether formally established or received by tradition, has been their fidelity to the apostolic faith grounded in scripture and evidenced in the life of the church through the centuries. Now, I want you to play that back with a, a, a 21st century eye, if you will. Received by tradition has been their fidelity to the apostolic faith grounded in Scripture. So the faith of the apostles, those who were going out after Jesus had, had given them the Holy Spirit, those who were spreading the message of the good news, they were grounded in scripture. And all of this was evidenced in the life of the church through the centuries. Is our church, are our churches reflective of the fact that we are rooted in scripture and telling the story of Jesus? Go on, to page, go on through page 49. Scripture witnesses to the redeeming love of God in Jesus' life and teachings, his atoning death, his resurrection, his sovereign presence in history, because he was a real person. You can look that up. His triumph over the powers of evil and death and his promised return. Sounds like the Apostles' Creed, doesn't it? Right? Go on to page 50. Scripture's the witness to that though, right? We share with many Christian communions a recognition of the authority of Scripture in matters of faith, the confession that our justification as sinners is by grace through faith, and the sober realization that the church is in need of continual reformation and renewal. Huh, interesting. So basically, our Methodist roots are placed in the authority of Scripture. Most everything that we do and say comes from Scripture, right? Or it should. Uh, I had a, another unique part of this was when they talked about our EUB roots. And, and there's an inclusion in that in paragraph 103 that talks about what they believed. And I find this to be very, very interesting. Because I'm wondering, I'm not old enough to, to remember the pre-EUB days, but I'm wondering if maybe there was not as much focus on the Holy Spirit back then. Because listen to what it says in paragraph 103, page 62. We find our EUB roots to include something very interesting. Matched with these affirmations, those things we just talked about, was the conviction that converted Christians are enabled by the Holy Spirit to read scripture with special Christian consciousness. They prized this principle as the supreme guide in biblical interpretation. Ooh. I think we can agree scripture is important, right? 
It's, it's valuable. It, it holds keys to our, our, even our society. Each of you, though, has the Holy Spirit available to you to help you, to guide you, and direct you through the reading and interpreting of Scripture. So looking at our screen today, I don't know if those words are going to be too small for you all to see, but I'll walk through some of it for you. Uh, you're going to notice most notably is the change in our icon, right? Last week, uh, we kind of described it as a deranged peace symbol. Today, it's missing parts of it. Well, what's that mean? Rooted is just the roots, right? And so you see there are these, these three roots, right? And there's logic behind why there's three roots. What are our three roots? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is what roots us. This is where we begin. This is where anyone, anywhere, at any point along your journey, you have the desire and need to be rooted. If you came to Christ yesterday, if you haven't yet and you're going to today because the Spirit's pulling on you, this is for you. If you have been a believer since you can remember, in other words, you've been coming to Sunday school and, and, and church since you were uh, this you know, tiny, tiny person and, and you've always believed, this is for you. If you're somewhere in the middle and you're struggling with your faith, this is for you. Every single one of us has the desire or should want to be rooted in scripture. We should want to be engaged in finding out about God. Holy scripture should be our source of all things concerning the information of God. You can study it in all kinds of different formats. If you don't want to read a King James Version, there's other versions. If you don't have time to read, you can listen to it through audiobooks or through the Bible app. You can find other translations that make more sense to you. You can find commentaries. Yeah, you can read commentaries that explain. Find a study Bible. There's usually little sections at the bottom of a study Bible that expand on the text and what it means and what, the, what was going on at the time. Every one of you have these resources that are available to you. These are not just pastoral resources. These are not saved for those who are religiously educated or those who are in higher standing with God. Uh, I, I can tell you right now, I am not in any more higher standing with God than you are. Absolutely not. These are all resources that are at your disposal. If you don't have them or you want them, ask me. I, I have shelves of things here that I can give to you. I was listening to uh, N.T. Wright, and he was on the, the Carrie Newoff Leadership Podcast um, a while ago. And, and I'm going to have to paraphrase because I didn't, I didn't quote it. But one of the things that he said in this podcast was that – our main problem in our society and in our culture today is that we've lost the art of reading and interpreting scripture for ourselves. We would much rather find ourselves having someone else do it for us, and then that gets us into trouble because now we're going to be believing the things that we hear, and we won't have a way of testing them against Scripture, so we won't have a way of knowing if this person's telling me the truth or not. We're just going to believe it. Now, in today's uh, overblown <laughs> social media age, there are a lot of voices for you to listen to. There's a lot of places you can go for information. And I encourage you that if information about God is something that you're looking for, there's a good place to start, and it's not online. It's not other people. It's Scripture. The Holy Spirit can and will guide you, but we have to be willing to allow it. All of our reading of Scripture should be prayed over. And we should ask, Holy Spirit, come, guide me and direct me as I'm attempting to find out what it is that you're doing with this for me. 
How many of you have ever had the opportunity of, of reading a, a, a passage of scripture and, and it means something different than it did before? Right? You, I didn't, for the life of me, we were going through uh, the Advent season and, and for the life of me, I could not remember that Zechariah w- was struck silent by the angel when he didn't believe. I've, I've, read, I've read this passage like a thousand times in Luke. And I don't ever, I can't recall him being silented. Like, wow, he doubted. And then the angel said, nope, you aren't speaking until the baby's born. And then remember that part. God has a way of revealing to us what it is that we need. He has a way of showing us everything it is that it's about him that we need. In all of the canon of what we would call Christian holy scriptures, and that is the the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? We see a story played out that involves Jesus from the very beginning, right? John 1.1. John 1.1 has been in my mind all week long. And and how many of you watched the uh, Jeopardy Tournament of Champions? It was the final Jeopardy question that night, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, Really? You've only had this on my heart for like all week long and now it's a final Jeopardy question? Seriously? In the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. And what does that mean? That means Jesus himself was there at the beginning. He was there at the beginning of of creation. He was there as as Adam and Eve fell from, from, from the grace of God. He was there, and even before his birth as a human, Jesus was in a position to see that this creation that they had created together was going to fail. Scripture is that love story. It's that love story about a, a creator who loves us, who, of, of, who very much a piece of him was going to someday be essential in proving our salvation. He was placed in a position where we would need him. We may not desire him. We may not even know who he is, but there's something in our souls and our very created beings that are yearning for him and need him. He came to us because he loves us. He had watched and watched and watched the struggle. And he realized that, okay, it's time to go. He made it to earth as a human being. And what happened? Today's the celebration of his baptism, right? And and what happened in his baptism? You remember that scenario? He walks, you know, John's baptizing people in the river, right? He's telling them, you got to get ready. Jesus is coming. He didn't say Jesus. He said, there's one coming who's greater than I. I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Right? And then Jesus comes to him and John says, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not touching that. I can't do this. I'm not, even, I'm not even worthy to wash your sandals, let alone baptize you. And Jesus looks at John and he says, you have to. You have to, because there is a part of me that is a human being. John, I'm not all God. I'm part God. I'm part human. I'm both of those great things together. And the part of me that's human needs to dunk me in this water, to cleanse me of my earthly, physical, fleshly sin so that I can begin this ministry that I've been here for all along. That's scripture. It's telling that whole story, right? He died after this, right? He gave up his life. Could have easily saved himself, chose not to. He died and rose again. Why? To provide for us a way into this relationship with God despite ourselves. He gave us the means. It's up to us to find it, to look for it, 
and to be stirred by it. In today's society and culture, it's very easy for us to get blindsided, right? How many of you had that break, the Christmas break? If you had kids, right? You had Christmas break and the life schedule went right out the window. It's gone. Nobody knows what time to wake up. Nobody knows where they're supposed to be. There's a holiday in the middle of the week. Everything's chaos. It's because our bodies are used to the rhythm, right? They were used to the rhythm of life. They were used to the rhythm of getting up, getting things done, getting to work, getting to school, whatever it was. Our bodies were used to the rhythm. God wants us to have a rhythm like that. He wants us to have a rhythm with him in which it's normal for us to seek him out as soon as we rise in the morning. It's, 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 it's a normal rhythm. And maybe you're not a morning person. Maybe your rhythm is lunchtime rhythm. I, I, I seriously do. I, I, um, uh, I used to work uh, for Carter Lumber. I used to sell uh, uh, lumber to different construction crews and go all over the place. And, and, and I had a, a one guy who would always tell me, don't bother me at lunch. Because I'd be like, hey, we should go do lunch sometime, right? Let's go do lunch. He said, no. Okay, don't eat lunch. And so after I got to know him, and that became a little bit more of part of a conversation, he said, my lunchtime is my time. I get away. I get away from the, the crew that's working, and I get away by myself, and I focus in on Scripture. I eat my lunch that my wife packs for me and I sit in his presence and I'm like, Ooh, now that's a rhythm, right? How cool would that be? And some of you, maybe your rhythm is at night. Maybe it's, Oh man, I'm going to put the kids to bed and then everything's quiet. Oh, there's my moment, right? Oh yeah. You can hear it. And that's my moment. That's my moment to get away. There's, 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 Stuff you can stream on TV. You don't have to watch it when it's on anymore. So just be quiet. You can always go watch your show later, right? Just sit, be patient, listen. God wants us to find our rhythm. With everything that I've studied and learned over the past four years uh, in in pastor school or however you want to call that, uh, a daily rhythm of prayer and scripture, it is so vital and so important to your spiritual life. Not only is it vital and important to your spiritual life, but when you find that this is part of your everyday, you find and realize, man, I do need God every day. I need to understand what he's saying to me every day. I need to pray and talk and and get things off my chest with him every day. I need to ask. I need to doubt. I need to lay things on him that are heavy. I need to give him things that are light. Whatever it is, I need that relationship. The more you can get of him, the better off you are. And what I've noticed is that when this life, this spiritual life of ours is more in rhythm and more in tune, the rest of our lives become a little bit different. You'll have people in your family or people that know you that'll be like, what's going on? You're different. What's happening to you? You're different. People will notice because your life will reflect what it is that you're filling it with. We need this this hope that God brings. We need this affirmation to be part of what we believe about ourselves on a daily basis. If not, the, the world will tell you how to feel about yourself. It's a reason we have a more connected society than we've ever had, but yet depression and suicide are at high levels. We are forgetting who we are. And we're forgetting the God that wants to tell us who we are, that we're loved, that we're appreciated, and that no matter what we've done and no matter what we've stepped in, he's there to help us and clean us and pick us up and take us with him. We need to understand what it is that Christ has done for us and the place that the Holy Spirit holds in our daily life. Are you ready? Are you ready to begin a a, a new rhythm? Maybe a different rhythm of your life. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to adapt? Maybe uh, to to feeling better, uh, functioning better, educating yourselves in the ways that God may have you go or what he's trying to show you? 
realize today that you are fully capable of hearing the voice of God through scripture. You are fully capable of understanding it and applying it. He's given you those tools. He's given you the Holy Spirit to make that possible. But are you willing to make the changes to your day-to-day life that are necessary so that this can happen to you on a daily basis? You realize that this feeling that you have when you are here on a Sunday morning, that enriching feeling that, man, I feel empowered. Man, I feel better. You can have that every day. That doesn't come from me. I hate to tell you. (laughs) Don't want to deflate you, but I'm a human being. I'm faulty. He's not. And he is there every day for you. Every day. Are you ready? Our faith and success will come in time. But our roots, our roots, we've got to plant them. We've got to have them in the right soil. We've got to have the proper water. We've got to have the right amount of sunlight. And we've got to do everything that is in our power to see that that grows the way God wants that to grow. Are you ready? Amen. I'd like to offer up an offertory prayer.